We welcome everyone back to another edition of Chicago's Legal Latte. Hi, everyone. This is Jim Mitchell. And uh, today we're going to take a look at uh, the business side of things as we welcome attorney Lance Siebel, actually a shareholder at LaBelle Law, in to talk about employee handbooks. And uh, Lance, first of all, it's been a while since we've had a conversation with you. So thanks very much for making the time today. Yeah, of course. Uh, employee handbooks. I think most of us have encountered them in one place or another. Um, would love to learn about the relevancy and uh, if they're still used. But it, from your point of view, in terms of representing businesses and employment law, uh, does does everybody need one? I think everybody should have one. I mean, I guess a lot of it depends on the size of the company. I mean, if you're one or two people, it might not be absolutely necessary. I think as you get to five or more, I think it's really a requirement more than anything else at that point. I don't think it's wise to operate your business and not have an employee handbook. And what what, what are the benefits that you provide to an employer? Yes, I mean, I think the easy one is it keeps your employees informed about what your policies and practices are. Um, that way they know what where to go to get information about paid time off, vacation, uh, when they're going to get paid, leaves they might be entitled to um, and other you know general policies that any employer might have. I think on a more practical legal level for me, um, whenever I'm dealing with administrative agencies and I deal with some kind of employee complaint, it's always very, very helpful for me to have an employee handbook to point to to say, yes, we have this policy or that policy and we followed it and therefore this whatever for example, there's a termination, this person's termination fit into that policy, and it wasn't for any of the reasons that they think it might have been for. Mm -hmm. uh, is it uh, HR that you, if there's an HR organization in the company, that would be the ones to put it together? Um, usually it's either the HR department within maybe a larger company. Mm -hmm. um, if you're talking about maybe a little bit smaller company that doesn't have an HR department, it's the ownership of the company that wants to put something like that in place. Uh, are there templates out there that, uh, that someone could go to, or do you kind of start from scratch each time? <laughs> I have a template, but my, mine's tailored mainly to Illinois. I mean, you know, okay. certainly there, there are templates out there. I think the issue you run into with those templates are, you know, a couple fold. Number one, even if you can find one that's state based, meaning you could find one that's, for example, you know, an Illinois type handbook, uh, Illinois changes their laws every year. So mm -hmm. unless you're frequently updating that particular template, um, it, it's, it may be helpful to you to get off the ground, but then it, it, if over time you don't update it, then it's not going to do you any practical good after maybe even a year. So let's, let's talk about the timing. Um, does it make sense for a you know, good-sized company um, to actually update the, the document each year? They should at the beginning of the year. I mean, Generally speaking, most laws go into effect January 1st. Now, there's there's other ones that may go into effect during different times of the year. Um, but as a more practical rule, most of your laws are set to go into effect on January 1st, 2024. For example, mm -hmm. uh, in January 1st, 2024, the amount of leave people are entitled to changes because there was county ordinances and now there's a statewide ordinance. Now you need to change your handbook to reflect that reflect the carryover hours for that. And, you know, and then every year you can, you know, I could give you a litany of examples of different laws that come out every year that you would have to account for in a handbook or in some other way within your HR or employment contracts, for example. And I assume that the normal process is that uh, the, the handbook is given to a new employee when they're onboarded. Um, but if there are laws that change or company updates, policies change, and the, the the handbook is updated each year, does do you go back through that signature process with each and every employee, even if they've been with you for some time? You should, mm -hmm. um, ideally. Does that always happen? Probably not. And then I think the caveat then I would probably put on that is, you know, sometimes you change your policies in a very general way. That, that may not necessitate, you know, or if you didn't have a signature, it wouldn't be the end of the world. But when you start talking about changes to wages, payments, vacation time, things, you know, if you went from being 48 employees to 52, and now you're, you know, have to give FMLA leave, for example, those would all be things you would want a particular 
you do want the employees to sign off on those changes. And are there certain must have elements in an employee handbook? I mean, if you're going to do one, you, you got to make sure these things are covered. I mean, if you ask me, there's a, there's a ton of them, but I mean, yeah, I think the very basic ones are, you know, you do need to deal with discrimination and, and sexual harassment and your policies for that. That's very important. Um, paid time off, particularly with the laws that are coming out now about how that accrues and what carryovers you're allowed. You would definitely want that. I think uh, provisions relevant to whether overtime is permitted, um, are, are certain employees exempted from overtime, those kind of things need to be in there. Um, when you pay people should certainly be in there. Um, a feature of Illinois law is, you know, how are employees reimbursed for their expenses needs to be in there. Um, you know, Illinois is a concealed carry state. So, you know, do you allow handguns in your establishment would be something that I would think would have to be in there. Um, if you offer medical, what are, what, are, what are those provisions? Those need to be in mm -hmm. there. So yeah, I could probably give you quite a long list, as you can see, but yeah. it would vary certainly by employer. But you know, there are a, a, a litany of laws in Illinois that cover employment. And so you'd want to make sure those were addressed within the handbook. Um, I assume it's probably safe to say that the content of handbooks have, have evolved over the years. I mean, whether it's social media policies or now you have many people working from home, I assume they still need to, you know, understand the policies. Uh, what's the divergence of handbooks from what they might have been a decade or two ago? Yeah, I mean, I think maybe a decade or two ago, you were probably talking very simply about more compliance side. And what I mean by that is, you know, what were you doing to comply with the law? Um, and there's certainly a large element of that that remains in any handbook. For example, the discrimination policies, that's something you would have seen 10 or 20 years ago, um, and it's still there. Um, you know, but the newer things, you know, you talk about concealed care, you talk about these different changes to um, paid time off. Those are all things that weren't there. Um, remote work policies, you know, something that probably wasn't there 10 years ago. What's your policy for that? How does a person get it? What what do they have to do to qualify? And what's your expectation for that going forward? Um, you know, the internet policies are probably a lot different now than they were 10 years ago, where, you know, 10, 20 years ago, you had very basic kind of internet. Now you have apps and smartphones and you know, people communicating work stuff through their personal cell phones and, and how do you control that? Um, so those things would all be different, I think, today as opposed to 20 years ago. But like I said, I mean, there's the compliance piece never changes. Mm -hmm. There's just more of it. <laughs> and I think it would be easy to assume that uh, the purpose of a handbook is to inform employees of policies and things that they need to be aware of. Uh, as as part of their employment agreement. But is it also safe to say that really a well-done handbook serves to protect the employer when there are issues? Uh, is it makes sense for them to have it so they can always point to their standard policy? Yeah, I mean, I, like I said, I think it, it's a dual purpose. One, it's informational for employees. Um, but, you know, from again, from a legal perspective, for me, it's it's a protective device. Mm -hmm. um, you know, are you complying with this? Does this person think that they can never be fired? Well, does the handbook say it's at will employment? Um, you know, they, they didn't follow the policy to complain of discrimination or sexual harassment. So is that going to help me in a defense in, in a case like that? It, it may, certainly. Um, you know, wage things, you know, they say I didn't get paid on this date. Okay, well, what, what was the actual pay date? Are we still within the window to make that payment? Um, so, yeah, I mean, it's definitely a, a protection for the owner, I mean, it, or the business, but I mean, it's not the end all be all, but it's certainly one of the first places I go, mm -hmm. and particularly when you're dealing with an administrative agency as opposed to a pure lawsuit, that's the one thing they're looking for. Does, does It's one of the questions they ask, do, do okay. you have this particular policy? And it's nice to be able to go into the handbook and say, yes, I do have that. Um, and I'm sure it's a red flag right from the start, but are there situations in which new hire doesn't want to sign, they they refuse, and is there anything an employer should do at that point? Um, I would think it would be somewhat unusual just because I don't know that, I'll be careful saying this, I don't know that most employees understand that it's protective for the employer. They view it as more informational. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. The protection side is more of a you know, owner HR piece of it. 
you know, you can't force somebody to sign it. I think what, what you would want to do with the file or that person's personnel file is put a memo in the file. Hey, we gave them the handbook on this date um, and they didn't sign for it. Um, is that perfect? Is it as good as a signature? No, but it, it's better than, well, you know, the handbook's floating around and we have no proof we ever gave it to a person. Um, and I, I guess it's a fair question. Are handbooks, are we still talking about actual printed handbooks or are they mostly electronic now? Um, both. I, I mean, okay. I think a lot of employers still do a paper one. I mean, I have a paper one of ours, for example, just because it's easier to thumb through for me. Mm -hmm. um, I know, so, you know, there are certain companies that when they onboard, part of the onboarding process is, you know, the handbooks online. But, it, you know, going back to your signature question, you probably can't complete your onboarding unless you check the box that says you review the handbook and understand its content. So you wouldn't even be onboarded in an electronic case, I would imagine, if you didn't actually sign for the handbook. So let's talk about your role and Lavelle Law and, and others, other attorneys like you. You, you know, I'm, I had a question prepared to say, why, you know, how does a law firm help? I've heard you talk already about, you know, being able to defend uh, clients, uh, companies who come to you with uh, issues and to point to the handbook. Um, it also sounds like and maybe I'm overstepping here, but would you review a handbook before it's distributed? Is that part of the role you might take? Um, I take a lot of different roles on the employment law front. So, I mean, I draft handbooks. Okay. Uh, like I, said, I have a template that I use that's, you know, up to date with every Illinois law. And then I'm updating that template as I go along year to year. Um, so, yes, I mean, I do drafting. I will review them. Um <laughs> that generally doesn't usually go well for the, the client in that case, just because, you know, again, I see a lot of very templated ones and I'm like, mm -hmm. well, this is not good. This is not good. This needs to come out. This needs to go in. Um, but I'll certainly review it. And then obviously, as I've alluded to, I mean, I, I defend a lot of companies relative to discrimination, Department of Labor claims, all of those kind of things where, you know, those policies become vitally important to me that they're there so that when I do respond to those entities, I can point to a certain provision and use it to do what I need to do. Yeah, I imagine a, a, a risk for the employer would be to have a handbook uh, if they don't have it reviewed by someone like you, and the handbook is in violation with what the law calls for. Um, you know, that, that I assume would probably set them up for, uh, for a problem down the road. It would, but I would imagine if they're using a templated one, the problem is less that it's directly against the law just may not encompass what it needs to encompass for that particular statute. Okay. Well, we're talking almost at the beginning of October. You referred to laws changing January 1, uh, beginning of the year being a good time to uh, update uh, or introduce a handbook if there isn't one. Is that a uh, couple of month process? Is this now the right time for people to be reaching out to plan for the new year? Yeah, I think if you don't have one, there's never a bad time to start. Um, you can always update it. Um, you know, if you do have an, an existing one, the beginning of the year is a great time to review it um, just because, you know, again, a lot of laws go into place. And then are you going to be in compliance with those laws as your handbook goes into the new year? Um, uh, so people might want to get in touch with you, follow up. Lance, what's the best way to reach out to you? Yeah, our office number is 847-705-7555. I can be reached at, and I'll spell this, L Z B L at Lavelle Law. So it's L-Z-I-E-B, like boy, E-L-L -L at Lavelle Law. Um, and those are the best ways to get a hold of me. Excellent. Uh, Lance, it's great to talk to you again. Thanks for taking the time and uh, very informative. We'll get this information out and hope to talk to you again soon. Great. Thanks, Jim. Talk to you Thanks, soon. Lance.